What's going on you guys? Dark Saint here bringing you guys another video talking to you guys about the division. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the striker set and seeing how we can build it. Yes, the striker set took a nerf with update 1.3 which makes it not quite as viable but still a very, very, very powerful set and I want to go over with how to build it and how to make it stronger and you still definitely want to have one of these guys on your team at all times. I'm going to be going over what the striker set does, how to build it, the weapons to combo with it, and how to combo it with other allies so that you can get the best out of a striker gear set. So let's see how we can build this. The first thing we'll look at is the set bonus number one. This requires two pieces of armor in order to obtain. You get 10% enemy armor damage. You will do more damage towards the enemy shield. That's the little white bars above their health. This used to be 20%, but it took a nerf down to 10%. You can still get the other 10% if you have five pieces equipped. The next one is a set bonus three. You get 20% critical hit damage. This is for having three pieces of the striker set equipped. This used to be 50%. You can still get that running five pieces, but it did take a nerf, and now it's only 20% with three pieces. And the last one is the striker's battle gear. Every round that connects will increase the damage you do by 1% up to 100%. However, every time you miss, you will lose 2%, and you will also lose 1% of damage every second that you're not dealing damage. And then, of course, you have your set bonus of number five. This requires five pieces of armor to obtain. You'll gain the other 10% enemy armor damage, and you'll gain the other 30% critical hit damage, giving you 20% enemy armor damage and an additional 50% critical hit damage, as well as, of course, still being able to have the striker's battle gear. Now something that you guys do need to know about before we go into building the striker set is the striker set is very very powerful but only in PvE. This is not a set that you want to use in PvP just because in PvE you can really stack up the damage against a heavy set armor guy. One of the big guys even if they have a shield you can actually shoot their shield and build the striker set up that way. As long as you're landing your hits on the enemy you can build it up very very quickly. However, in PvP, it is not going to be viable. You just don't land your shots as often in PvP. People dodge around. It's hard to land those shots. It's hard to connect the shots. So even though 100% damage does sound amazing, you're just not going to have that in PvP. Now, there are exceptions to this. Let's say you ran in PvE, you built it up in the dark zone against some AIs, and then you happen to see a guy and swap out to a sniper and hit him in the head. Odds are you're going to take them down. You're doing 100% more damage. So you can do a lot of damage. But once you start actually participating in PvP, you're going to lose that damage because it's going to be harder to land your shots and enemies are going to be dodging around. So keep that in mind if you decide that you want to try and use this in the dark zone. It's not going to be very effective in PvP. Now, even though the striker set might not be the best set in the world to use for PvP, and I understand that, it is still one of the, if not the best, gear set in the game for PvE. So if you are running the Dark Zone for farming purposes, or you're taking on any of the in-game challenges, I highly recommend this gear set, and this is one of the gear sets that I personally use all the time, and I highly recommend it. Next, we're going to go over what kind of skills and attributes you're looking for when you are building this set. Starting out with a mask, you have your choices of damage to elites, critical hit chance, health on kill, exotic damage resilience, health, and or skill power. Now, final measure has become a very important role in most builds, so that 50% exotic damage resilience, if you are running that, you will not need this extra 15% exotic damage resilience. However, because the striker set does require five pieces to get the most out of it, and if you are running five pieces, then you might want to opt for the exotic damage resilience. However, that's not the first choice that I would make. For me, when it comes to running lead assault, I highly encourage having high amounts of skill power without having to give up anything for electronics. So I recommend running the skill power on the gas mask because it will help you with your first aid as well as if you guys are running pulse scan, you're able to scan out the enemies and do that much more critical hit chance and critical hit damage. Which because your vision pulse is doing more critical hit chance, you don't need the critical hit chance that comes with the gas mask. So your only good option for me is the skill power attribute as it will help you out the most. Not only will it heal you. It will also increase the amount of critical hit chance you get for your vision pulse and your critical hit damage from that. The only other option that might be viable would probably be the health on kill as being in the lead assault. You're probably going to be taking out the majority of the enemies. 
However, if you do a whole bunch of damage to an enemy and then your ally kills them, you don't get that health on kill. You have to be the one that finishes them off. And again, that doesn't work very well in PvP as that requires you to actually be the one that melees the guy out rather than just taking them down. So if someone else melees them, you won't get that health back either. And with the health on kill, it also requires you to really build health on kill and have a bunch of health on kill so that you can actually see something come out of it. 10 to 15% just isn't a lot. So if you're going full health on kill, then maybe, but I still highly recommend going for that skill power build as that will help you out more in a lot more situations, not only in PvE, but also in PvP. So I do encourage the skill power for this build and really any lead assault build. Next, we're going to look at your minor attributes. You have your choices between the blind death resistance, scavenging, increased kill XP, enemy armor damage, burn resistance, and disorientation resistance. Now, with this, I highly recommend for you guys that are just starting out to go with the increased kill XP. This will help you guys in leveling up in the dark zone and getting to that next bracket so you can buy your weapons that you're looking for or whatever it is that you're looking for to get out of the dark zone. I do recommend getting a little bit more experience so you can build up that much faster. Now, if you're already, you know, midway through the dark zone or closing in on the end game, you're just looking to make yourself stronger, you obviously are not going to need that increased kill experience. And for that, I would opt for either the burn resistance or the increased enemy armor damage, as disorientation resistance and the blind death resistance are more of an annoyance than they are anything. If somebody flashbangs you or anything, it's the disrupt that really messes with you more than anything else. The blind goes away after a little bit the disorientation goes away after a little bit so i definitely opt for a burn resistance as that will stop you from being caught on fire and when you're caught on fire you're really at a disadvantage you're not able to shoot back you're not really able to run you're not able to do much of anything if you're on fire so i do recommend the burn resistance however enemy armor damage would not be bad as you are already running a pretty good amount of enemy armor damage with the striker set and anything more is just going to make you that much stronger and help you take out enemies that much faster so my choices would go down between the burn resistant and the enemy armor damage for this set as far as the skill attributes on the gas mask I'm not really going to cover too much about the skill attributes as they're not very significant in how you build your character. However, if you do, say, have the perfect mask and you are rolling for the gas mask skill attribute, I would recommend something like the Seeker Mine Explosion Radius as that will help you out with the Seeker Mine with Gas Charge, which is the skill that I recommend for those of you guys that are running Lead Assault. And we'll go over skills a little bit later on in the video. However, that's my choice as far as the skill attribute. However, the skill attribute is not the major thing you need to be looking at. That's just my recommendation for this skill attribute, as the other ones will require a higher amount of skill power, and you're just not going to have a lot of skill power as far as being able to put out damage with it using a lead assault build of this kind, because you're mainly going to be looking at your firearms and your stamina. Anyway, moving on past that, now we're going to take a look at your chest armors. Now with update 1.3, all future chest armors of really high quality are going to be given two gear slots as well as two major attributes. It used to be three attributes and you could roll with three gear sets or one attribute and two gear sets or two attributes and a third gear slot or just run all three with three major attributes. However, now you are limited to two major attributes and two gear mod slots, which to me is great. I think that that's absolutely amazing, mainly because I would never use three gear mod slots. I would always just use two major attributes and one gear mod slot. Now that I'm given a second gear mod slot, that's even better for me. And this only affects the future armors that you find, not the current ones that you have. Besides that, moving on, how do we build this? What kind of attributes are we looking for? As far as your major attributes, you have your choices between protection from elites, armor, damage to elites, health on kill, exotic damage resilience, or health, health being the second gear slot. Now, when it comes to chest armor, chest armors automatically come with the highest armor rating in the game, so you just want to make good better. Go ahead and add armor. Your first major attribute needs to be armor, and as high of an armor roll as you can get beneficially. So your first thing you're going to want to look at is make sure that it has armor as a major attribute. So definitely roll with high armor as your major attribute. That I cannot stress that enough. Your first slot, or really just one of your major attributes, needs to be armor. I highly encourage that. As for your second attribute, 
it really comes down to either you want health on kill, exotic damage resistance, or maybe damage to elites. Again, this is a PvE situation, so anything more that can help you out in PvE is always beneficial. If you're running tank, protection from elites, but we're not really worried too much about tank as you're running elite assault, you're looking to do more damage. Obviously, you want to stay alive, but you are looking to put out more damage. So for me, I would probably opt with damage to elites. However, health on kill is not a bad situation. I'm not trying to bash too much on health on kill. I know 10 to 13% is not a lot, 10 to 15% is not a lot, but you can add that up with some other health on kills from other situations to give you that much more health back. You can have health on kill on your weapon, on a couple of your armor pieces, and you can get a significant portion of your health back whenever you kill an enemy. As for the exotic damage resilience, exotic damage resilience will protect you from things like flamethrowers or the turrets and things like that. Even though you have maximum armor mitigation, armor mitigation will not protect you from the grenade launchers or the turrets or flamethrowers or anything along those lines. So I do encourage running exotic damage resilience. Even as an elite assault, you still want to stay alive. So I would encourage some exotic damage resilience as well. So those are my choices. It would first for me would be health on kill as I do enjoy getting some health back whenever I kill someone and my second choice would be exotic damage resilience however protection from elites or damage to elites are not that bad the one I would avoid would be the health the health is just not significant enough to really justify using as you could just simply put on a stamina gear mod and that'll not only give you that health but give you that much more and the more protection you have, the stronger you will be and the longer your health will last. So I wouldn't worry too much about the health attribute. It's not that high and it's not necessarily needed, especially considering now you have two extra gear mod slots. I would just simply roll for some stamina gear mod slots with some any kind of other attribute. That's my recommendation for that. Next, we're going to look at your minor attribute, which there's really not a lot to choose from here, given that you only have your choice of between ammo capacity and increased kill XP. Now, of course, ammo capacity is the giveaway one for running with any kind of set in the game whatsoever. Always running with more ammo is always nice to have. However, if you are new to the Dark Zone and you are trying to level up in the Dark Zone, increased kill XP is not a bad option, as it will help you level up that much faster in the Dark Zone. Moving on, next we'll take a look at your backpacks. Starting out with the backpack, you're offered one gear mod slot and one major attribute, and you cannot roll for a second gear mod slot. Choices for your major attributes are skill haste, armor, critical hit damage, skill power, and signature ability resource gain. Now, as far as signature ability resource gain, that just allows you to get your super back or your link back or whatever you want to call it back that much faster, and it will deal depending on the amount of damage you do to an enemy. So when you do a certain amount of damage to an enemy and then that enemy falls, you'll get a certain amount of skill back. If you're the one that finishes off the enemy, you'll get a little bit more. So the signature ability resource gain that you get is how much faster your super will charge as you're killing enemies. As for your other options of skill haze, critical hit damage, and skill power, and honestly the best option for the bat pack in my opinion is going to be skill power. Now starting out with a bat pack, I do kind of recommend running armor, especially for you guys that are just getting to the end game, you guys are just barely finding high ends and purples and your first set of gear sets. Go ahead and run a little bit of armor there, you're going to need it to get to maximum armor mitigation that will help you stay alive in the dark zone. However, once you get around 200 gear score or above, you're going to find that you don't need the armor there and you can opt for armor on your chest piece, on your knee pads, and on your holster, which is where I recommend putting them, and that will push you towards 75% armor mitigation and anything more that you might need isn't going to be much and you can get those from a gear set. So I do recommend putting on skill power once you reach that point. You're not going to need the armor that you get from the backpack and you're just throwing that extra attribute away. I would recommend the skill power as it will combo very, very well with the skill power you get from your gas mask, and that will allow your first aid to heal you that much more, keeping you in the fight that much longer as a lead assault, and it will also combo very, very well with something like a vision pulse if you chose to opt for that. Next, we're going to take a look at your minor attributes. You have your choices between the disrupt resistant, the ammo capacity, the bleed resistance, or the burn resistance. Of course, you can always go with more ammo. That will combo very well with your chest piece. And because they are fixing the glitch or exploit or whatever you want to call it to where you could just simply equip a dummy backpack that would give you an increased amount of ammo that you have and then you could just swap back. That is still an option right now, but that is supposed to be patched in the future. So it might be worth running a little bit extra ammo on the backpack 
if you are wanting to run higher amounts of ammo. However, running in the dark zone and really running in any of the in-game activities, it's not too bad of an issue finding ammo or getting your hands on ammo. So I would recommend for this to run the burn resistance if you're running lead assault as being caught on fire can be very disadvantaging especially against something like the cleaners and things like that or you could run the disrupt resistance however the disrupt resistance and the burn resistance are both going to be more effective in a pvp situation to avoid the flashbang sticky bomb causing disrupt or the burn effect from somebody using something like incendiary rounds in situations like that th those would be more beneficial However, because the striker set is not used for PvP, it really only comes down to the increased ammo capacity. So the option is kind of open on this set just because of how it's used. However, really any of these wouldn't be a bad thing to have. So I wouldn't worry too much about your minor attribute for the bat pack. It just doesn't give you a lot of options. And because the striker set is mainly used in PvE, any of these are not a bad option to have. I guess I would go with ammo capacity. For me, that would probably be my primary thing just because I do enjoy having a little bit of extra ammo and being able to stay in the fight and not have to stop and look for ammo every time I turn around. So I would opt for ammo capacity for the PvE situations. However, any of the resistances are beneficial in a multitude of different situations. So it's still open for debate. As far as the skill attributes, with the backpack you are actually giving two skill attributes and again those are of your choosing. However, as a lead assault, I would still recommend something that would benefit you as far as self heal, self ally heal, or anything along those lines. Or again, the seeker mine explosion radius. You're not looking for seeker mine damage as the gas charge does not do damage. Next, we're going to take a look at the gloves. As for the gloves, you are given three major attributes. However, gloves cannot come with gear mod slots, nor do they come with a gear mod slot. You are only given three major attributes to choose from, as well as a skill attribute. So there's not even a minor attribute on the gloves. As for your major attributes, your choices are between critical hit chance, damage to elites, critical hit damage, shotgun damage, assault rifle damage, LMG damage, marksman rifle damage, pistol damage, SMG damage, or health on kill. Now for me, this really is very simple and it's the same one I always run. Go with the critical hit damage as the gloves have the highest critical hit damage in the game. Go with the critical hit chance as the more of a chance that you have of landing critical hit damage, the more damage you can put out. And that'll combo very, very well with the striker set already having critical hit damage, comboing with the critical hit damage you get from the gloves. So you definitely want to run a high amount of critical hit chance so that you can actually put out that said damage. And this will also give you options to run things like critical hit chance on your weapons, like on your barrel, on your scope, even possibly on your magazine. Being able to run a high amount of critical hit chance that you get from those will combo very well with the critical hit damage you get from the set as well as from the gloves so critical hit chance and critical hit damage are given on the gloves the last one you have your choices really that come down between the damage to elite or the health on kill again you can opt for the health on kill if you have health on kill and some other armor pieces that'll combo together giving you you know 20 28 30 percent health back on kill depending on how much health on kill that you have so you combo the health on kill you get from the gloves with the health on kill that you may have put on your chest armor and you get a fairly significant amount of health back per kill that you get and as a lead assault you will be getting quite a bit of those kills. Now if you're able to keep yourself alive without the health on kill you don't really rely on the health on kill then you can opt for the damage to elites as the damage to elites will do that much more damage against enemy AIs on all weapons that you use and that's why I don't recommend the, any of the weapon damages increases as they're really not going to be very beneficial and even if they are they only benefit that one specific weapon type so I don't recommend using that on any specific weapon type again as for your skill attribute really is up in the air it's up to you on what kind of skills that you guys are looking for again i will say that as a lead assault you are looking for distraction builds more than you're looking for any other type of build next we'll take a look at the holster the holster would be pretty easy you're looking for the triple stats that's your firearms your stamina and your electronics to all be there and you are looking for them to be as high as possible now of course, there are some times whenever you only get double stats and your third one won't be there. If that happens, you'll be given a second major attribute. 
However, you are looking to have all three of these as the major attributes are not that beneficial. Even the protection from elites is kind of low. As for your options for your major attributes, you have armor, protection from elite, skill haste, and pistol damage. And for me, you are looking for armor. It's pretty easy to go for armor on this, and it combos very well with armor on your knee pads and armor on your chest piece, as that will get you very, very close to 75% armor mitigation if it doesn't put you there. As for your skill attribute, you guys already know the drill. You're elite assault, and you're looking for benefits that will help you as a lead assault next we're going to take a look at your knee pads as for your knee pads you are guaranteed one gear mod slot on all new knee pads coming with update 1.3 as well as one major attribute as for your major attribute you have your choices between exotic damage resilience armor damage to elites protection from elites critical hit damage and health again health is too low you don't need it you can go ahead and cross that one out the protection from elites and the damage to elites can combo well with some of the other armor pieces if you guys chose to opt in that direction. However, they are kind of low with just this one piece, only 67%. And again, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I would definitely go with the armor as that will combo the best with the holster and the chest armor, pushing you towards the 75% armor mitigation cap. So those are my choices. As for the critical hit damage, you should have plenty of critical hit damage, but if you want a little bit more, if you feel like you have the extra armor to give up, maybe you already at 75% armor mitigation with just a couple of gear mod slots and the chest armor and the holster, which could happen, then you might want to go for an increased critical hit damage, or you can opt for one of the damage to elites or protection from elites. But primarily, I'd be looking at armor. That way you can free up the gear mod slots for something else. Next, we will take a look at the minor attributes on the knee pads. And on the knee pads, they're actually pretty significant. They have the highest stats on the knee pads. And those are the choices of the disruptor resistance, scavenging, enemy armor damage, enemy increased kill XP, bleed resistance, burn resistance, shock resistance, blind death resistance, or disorientation resistance. Now, again, you already know the blind death and the disorientation resistance are more of an annoyance than they are anything. So for me, I would go with the disrupt resistance, bleed resistance, burn resistance, or shock resistance. Of course, you are in PvE, so enemy armor damage is always a nice one to run. If you are leveling up in the dark zone, the increased kill XP is always nice, especially considering how high it is on this. So I would go with enemy armor damage, shock resistance, and burn resistance for in-game. However, if you are still leveling up, you might want to opt one of those for the increased kill XP. In this next park, we're going to go ahead and head down to the gun range. I'm going to give you guys an idea of how to build the striker set. I am running a striker set right now, but there's not really any mods or anything special on it. So my damage might seem low to a couple of you guys that feel like you're in-game and you're doing more damage. Keep in mind, I don't have any gear set up on this. This is just simply throwing on some strikers that I had just to watch it build up and everything give you an idea of how to build up the striker set the reason i'm using a pistol is to give you guys an idea of using a semi-automatic weapon say like a sniper or something and this would be you hitting as fast as you possibly could with a sniper so that's kind of why i chose to use the pistol i'm also going to show you smgs and assault rifles i'm not going to really go over lmgs because they kind of fall in the same category as an assault rifle they have a little bit of kick and that makes it harder to control and harder to sustain what you need in order to build the striker set you guys might also know that every time I swap weapons, I lose the striker bonus. That is currently a glitch in the game that should be patched fairly soon. You should be able to build it up with one weapon and then swap to a different weapon and still have your striker bonus. That's going to be patched. They've already said it's going to be patched. They just don't know when, so look forward to that. Now, as for the best weapon to build the striker set, I would have to give it to shotguns. Shotguns are just an amazing weapon because whenever you fire out a shotgun shell, you fire out a barrage of pellets rather than just one shot. And when you fire out that barrage, you can build up your striker set very, very, very quickly. As well as comboing it with the talent One is None to where when you land headshots, you have a high chance of getting that round back. The way one is none works is every time you land a hit, you have 50% chance of getting that bullet back. But because a shotgun shell shoots out a barrage of pellets, every single one of those pellets has a 50% chance of returning that round to the magazine. So you'll notice whenever I use the shotgun, I have pretty much infinite ammo. And this can be used with a variety of different shotguns, including the Sausage, the M870, the Super 90. Of the shotguns, I personally prefer the Super 90. Yes, it does take some time to reload, and that can be a burden. 
However, if you get the right build for it, it can be very, very powerful. Now, my recommendation for the Strongest Super 90 would be a Brutal, Responsive, and Meticulous. The Brutal will give you an increase to headshot damage. The Responsive will give you an increase to damage based off proximity. Like, when you're close to him, you'll do a little bit more damage, and that's great because the shotgun, you're always going to be close. And then the Meticulous will allow you to, whenever you get a kill, it'll return all the ammo to your magazine, which is great for a shotgun because you're going to be doing that a lot. You're going to kill a lot of enemies before you have to reload if you use it effectively and are able to combo it with something like the seeker mine or something that can really stun them it also works great with any kind of incendiary rounds anything that can hold the enemy still long enough for you to really blast them with the shotgun and build up your striker set and then swap to another weapon either way that's my recommendation on the weapon of choice for me as for the two weapons I would run with the striker set, it would have to be the shotgun for building the striker and then combo that with an SMG. And the reason I choose an SMG is because the SMG already comes with a high critical hit damage. As of update 1.3, it, they changed it from critical hit chance to critical hit damage. And that'll combo that much better with the striker's critical hit damage bonus that comes on the armor as well. So it goes great with SMGs and shotguns. It's really strong for close range combat and things of that nature and that's what really makes this thing shine all right so we've gone over the basics on how to build the striker set what kind of attributes you're looking for what kind of weapons work really really well with it now we're going to look at what kind of armor pieces you want to combo with it if you chose to run four pieces just to get the striker's battle gear and you were looking to run another two with it, one good option, of course, is the final measure that gives you a 50% exotic damage resilience. However, in PvE, it's not going to be so effective. It's still helpful, but just not as helpful. It's still viable, but because you're not using this in PvP or you don't want to use this in PvP, final measure can kind of fall under. The one that I would choose would be the Tactician's Authority and give you yourself an extra 4,000 skill power. If you look at my character now, already looking at 25,000 skill power, an extra 4,000 skill power on top of that would be insane, giving me close to 30,000 skill power. So that would make it to where I'd be viable with all my skills and not just the Seeker Mine or the Healing or anything like that. I could use a variety of different skills and all of them are going to be fairly strong. I could even combo it with a Sticky Bomb, do some damage to a guy, and then follow it up with my weapon damage and kill him if if I chose to opt it, that, opt it that way. Again, not a PvP build, but it's an option that you could go with. Next, of course, is your Sentry's Call. Sentry's Call gives you 10% increase to headshot damage. That used to be 30%, but with update 1.3, it did take a nerf, but it is still viable to choose this if you wanted to put a little bit more damage into your weapons and into the amount of damage you do with your weapons. However, it's not that significant, only 10%. The other one you could opt for is the Lone Star. However, the Lone Star does give you an extra 100% ammo capacity, but you'll find yourself being able to find ammo throughout the Dark Zone or any kind of challenge mode that you're doing. So really, ammo isn't such a big deal, or at least not as big of a deal as some people make it out to be. The next options we're going to look at is if you're running the full striker set, all five pieces and just one of the other. The ones that I would recommend would be the chest armor with vigorous, which grants overheal on all healing skills. This can combo very, very well with your first aid, allowing you to free up that overdose and being able to put on something like the booster shot to give you an increase to the damage that you're using. Or you could also combo it with the revive ability if you're running with another lead assault. Being able to revive him and keep him in the battle with you will help you guys put out some damage without having to stop and actually revive him yourself. You can just hit him with that or just run over and revive him and it'll definitely help because your skill power is so high you'll be able to heal each other the other one of course is your savage gloves the savage gloves already giving you a good amount of critical hit chance and that'll combo insanely well with the striker set because the striker set has so much critical hit damage going all the way up to 50 percent critical hit damage plus smgs having a high amount of critical hit damage on them any kind of extra critical hit chance that you can get in any way is always going to be beneficial Say if you had an SMG with Brutal, Deadly, and Vicious or something like that to really bring out that critical hit chance and that critical hit damage. Next thing we're going to look at is the talents. If I was running solo with this build, these are the talents I would be running. The critical save, using a med kit while your health is low, will allow you to have 40% increased armor, which is always nice, especially when you're by yourself and you're running the striker set and you're out there by yourself and you really don't have anyone to rely on. Being able to heal yourself and have a little bit more armor that can get you to cover and allow your skills to come back so you can heal is always nice. Another one that's useful is the precision. The headshot on a hostile will pulse them for 10 seconds. That will give you your pulse that you're needing to do a little bit more damage, get that increased critical chance, stuff like that. 
it's nice to be able to use this when you're by yourself and being able to see the enemies. Of course, if you're in the party, odds are one of your party members with high skill power has the vision pulse that you need, so you won't need this if you're in a team. But if you're running solo, it's always beneficial to have this. Another good one to run is on the move. Kill a hostile target while moving to reduce incoming damage by 30%. This is always nice to have because you're going to be finding yourself killing a lot of enemies all the time when you're running the striker set. And being on the front line and having that extra armor is always nice to have. And this works very, very well in both team situations and solo situations because you are going to be downing a lot of enemies. And being able to move around freely while you're downing these enemies is always nice. And it combos very well with the Seeker Mine as a Seeker Mine will be able to go out and you'll be able to move around and kill some people without having to be in cover. And then, of course, you guys know the talent one is none. The one and none still has a few bugs with it that need to be worked out. However, when you combo it with a shotgun, it is absolutely amazing. Being able to unload round after round after round into a guy's head and almost never have to reload. And then you can combo that with the meticulous bonus you can find on a shotgun running a brutal, responsive, meticulous shotgun. And you basically have infinite ammo for life. It's absolutely amazing. I love running a combination like that. Now, if you're in a team, you would swap it up to something more like this, running the triage. Healing an ally reduces all your skill cooldowns by 15%. This allows you to whatever, whenever you use your first aid and people are able to run in and out of your cloud multiple times. Being able to get all of your skills back very, very quickly. This is a very talented in-game thing. You guys have seen me use it in my streams. You'll see other players use it all the time. Comboing triage with a team is always nice to do. Also, you would also want to run Battle Buddy to where when you revive somebody you get that 50% increase to armor. This helps out tremendously. I can't even stress this enough, especially if you combo it with the chest armor with vigorous because you're able to revive allies with your first aid shot and at the same time still get that damage reduction. So you don't have to stop and revive them. Once they're up, you still get that damage reduction. This combos well with on the move and stuff like that. So you're able to stay alive a lot longer and still be a very, very big benefit to your team. The other ones you might want to consider would be something like fear tactics. If you guys chose to run something like a shock turret or a flame turret instead of the flashbang or the seeker mine with gas charge you chose to opt for a turret instead which is still very viable if you can stick it up somewhere high to where the enemies have trouble hitting it running something like fear tactics can shock a whole group of enemies yes it's only a 30 percent chance but you'll be surprised how often that actually knocks and actually works for you or procs Another good one, of course, is the wildfire. The wildfire will also catch everyone on fire, and the fire does last longer than the shock ability. So this is something that is also viable with the flame turret. However, you can also use it with the incendiary rounds that you can equip to your weapon and be able to put out the fire and really catch a lot of enemies on fire, giving yourself some time to run around and kill some enemies, thus activating on the move, giving you yourself some armor. Combo that with a seeker mine. I mean, you could mix it up in a lot of different ways. Next, of course, we're going to look at the booster shot, temporarily increasing the damage that you inflict on the target. Of course, that's what I was talking about with the vigorous chest armor. You could combo with this, giving yourself a booster shot that allows you and all your allies that run through your healing cloud to be able to get that increase to damage. This also works with sticky bomb, so if you have somebody on your team with a high skill power, they could run through it, get a big chunk of increased damage. I won't say a big chunk. They would get... A portion of increased damage to their sticky bomb that might help you out in multiple situations where you need a sticky bomb to do some damage personally not what I would run with for the sticky bomb but it does help you out with weapon damage the other one of course is my favorite the gas charge seeker mine you set it out it rolls around disorientates enemies the enemies will still shoot of course but they're not able to aim so you're able to stand pretty much directly in front of them and blast them in the face with a shotgun shotgun stagger effect is always nice to have as well as it'll stagger them you'll be able to boost your shots and just keep landing headshot after headshot after headshot boosting your striker set with the shotgun and giving yourself a sh just a ton of ammo of course, you can also run it with the air burst seeker mine. The air burst will jump up in the air and rain down hellfire, catches enemies on fire. Again, you could run this with the fire talent that catches other enemies on tar on fire with a 30% chance. That combos very, very well. You can combo it because you're hitting so many enemies with it. You can catch just a whole group of enemies on fire. Again, you already have the dragon breath turret. That combos very well with that ability as well. And then, of course, you have the shock turret that combos very well with the fear tactics 
And then after that, of course, you have your vision pulse. If you have a high enough amount of skill power, you can run a good vision pulse that'll help out your allies. And if you guys chose to, you could also go with the flashbang sticky bomb. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the flashbang sticky bomb just because I don't feel like it lasts that long. However, it is viable, especially whenever you're running something like the striker set, being able to flashbang somebody and run up on them and be able to put some shots on them. But because it doesn't last as long as the Seeker Mind's disorientation effects, I personally prefer the Seeker Mind's over the flashbang. Either way, you guys, that pretty much covers everything you need to know about how to build the striker set and how to make it very, very effective. However, now we're going to go over which one, in my opinion, is the best build. Now, for me, if I'm running with a team, I would probably run the five striker pieces with the vigorous chest armor. Just because it is very, very nice to be able to have another medic on the team and being able to heal your allies. And you're going to be running first aid anyway, so you might as well go ahead and be able to heal your allies. Yes, the savage gloves are a viable option, and they do allow you to do more damage, and that's definitely a great thing. But... At the same time, that's more of something that you're going to be using for PvP than you're going to be using for PvE. That's just my opinion about that. Either way, you guys, that'll wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to catch the next video as I go over the Centuries Call Set and how to build that one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. And